In this tutorial, we're going to talk about must use plugins. So I made a video a while back about using PHP and curl, and I had a question on that um, or a comment on that video from a subscriber that asked a specific question. And he said, you mentioned that you use curl to track the number of sold products from your client's site. So could you please briefly mention the main points of the process? One could also put a plugin that would fire on every successful sale and contact an external API via post method. But I guess curl allows intrusion without login or inserting plugin as it can easily be deleted by client. What makes curl ideal for this circumstance? I'm still learning back in WordPress and finding your tutorials very helpful. Thank you very much. So I want to address um, using curl a little bit and uh, I want to talk about must use plugins. Um, I haven't done a video on must use plugins and they can be very, very helpful in a situation like this. So um, he says one could also put a plugin that would fire on every successful sale. Now, the reason why we don't do that is because we want the user to have the best experience possible. And if you're firing an external API on the sale during, during that process, it could slow down the, um, the, the page load and stuff like that for the user. So there could be an error that happens. There could be so many things can go wrong or could possibly go wrong during that process. And we don't want to have the user wait for the sale to process. And if you've ever done that on some websites, you go in and you purchase a product and it immediately says, thank you for your sale. Thank you. Successful. But then you go to other sites and you click thing and it says, don't click twice because it takes forever to process the sale. And finally the page loads and says, thank you. They're more than likely doing things like that on that sale that requires, you know, it may be a large database or it may be even connecting to an external site to process something. So what we do for um, several clients and one in, one in particular is we get paid based on the number of sales that they've had on their website. So on a daily basis, weekly basis, or even a monthly basis sometimes, we process a file of all the sales and then take the percentage and then invoice the client for that number of that number of sales or the percentage or whatever. So um, he, he mentions on here that the user could disable the plugin. Well, the plugins that we use are must use plugins. So we build out everything for them based on their uh, what their site needs. And then in a reporting plugin like that, we use what's called a must use plugin. So in this video, I want to build a must use plugin so you guys can see um, what that does and how it works. I'm not going to expand on the curl on this video. I will make another video expanding on how to use curl and generate a report like that. And then accessing that information from an external site. I'll do that on another video. I think that making a must use plugin video is, is more important. So let's get started. So here on our ideapro.io site that we do testing and tutorials and stuff like that, we've got the page open here and this, and this is just the 2021 um, theme, the default 2021 theme that comes with the WordPress installation. And so then we're here in our um, dashboard. So if we go to plugins, you see up here under plugins, we have all inactive, recently active and auto update disabled. So with a must use plugin, must use plugins don't update from the WordPress repository um, or store or marketplace or whatever you want to call that um, must use plugins have to be updated manually and they also have to be uploaded manually so you have to have ftp access to the site to be able to enable them or install them and to be able to delete them 
There is no disable. So in this video, we're going to do that. We're going to create a plugin that's a must use plugin and show you how it works. Okay. So we're going to go to our code here. So we're going to go to the WP content folder here. And so here's our plugin folder. And our plugin folder has, you know, one plugin that we built on one of the last videos. Um, we're not going to put the must use plugin in this folder. We're going to create a new folder in our WP content folder, and it's going to be a MU hyphen plugins. Okay. So that is our must use plugin folder. So, and you may not have that folder, um, on your local or in the server itself. It could, um, most of the time that folder is not installed by default from WordPress installation. So MU plugins, and then here we're going to create a new file and that new file is going to be our plugin file. So the difference between a plugin in WordPress and a our must use plugin in WordPress is must use plugins work off of a single file and not a folder. So you have to create a single file where in a regular plugin, you can create that plugin in a folder and then the file in the folder is what WordPress accesses and stuff like that. In a must use, it has to be a single file. So we're going to create a, um, file here and we're going to call it generate report dot php okay we're going to save that and now we're in our must use folder save and now we're going to put up here at the top we're going to put in some php tags and we're going to do some comments and we're going to say plugin name is generate reports and then description this is a test plugin to show come on how mu plugins work all right there we go all right so then we want to do you know version 1.0 and it's always important to have your version number in there so that you know that that site is using um, what version of that plugin it's using especially on must use plugins because they're not automatically updated they're not updated from the the repository or marketplace whatever you want to call it um, these have to be manually uploaded all right so we're going to upload that with our ftp sftp built into um, or, or our package that is installed on sublime text three. Okay. So now we're going to go back over here to our dashboard on the ideapro.io site, and we're going to refresh the page. Now, if you look up here, we have all inactive, recently active and must use. If you click on this must use, there is our plugin generate reports. This, this is a test plugin to show how MU plugins work version 1.0. Now you can add author and all those different things that are in the um, plugin top up there that tell what this plugin is and who built it and what it does and all, you know, all that stuff and links to the author URL and all that. But I just want to make it quick and easy for this. So if you notice, there is no, when we hover, hover over this, there is no activate, deactivate, delete, or anything like that. That is because once you add a must use plugin to the site, it cannot be deactivated or removed except through FTP. And for security reasons, we usually don't allow FTP access to our server except for very specific people. So this plugin cannot be removed and uh, ex except for by us. It can't be removed by the client. So this will now do in the code whatever we tell it to do. So you have to be careful with must use plugins because sometimes they don't work the same way that plugins do. And the reason why is because must use plugins fire before any other plugin in your site. 
you can still use hooks and stuff like that for WordPress, but you have to be you have to really test to make sure that that plugin is going to do what you think it's going to do because it fires before anything else. The other thing that I want to mention is must use plugins fire in alphabetical order. So if you want to do two or three different must use plugins that do different things, naming them in alphabetical order will allow you to run things in alphabetical order. So if you said, if you, you know, before this generate report plugin runs, you wanted it to do something else, you would just need to write that plugin, that file, instead of generate reports.php, you would write that file with a letter that starts before G. So you could do A, you know, a hyphen whatever, B hyphen whatever, C hyphen whatever, you know. So you could build your plugins like that, A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, to put those in the order that you want them to fire. So that's an important piece to understand. So I'm not going to go into building out something that this plugin does. I just wanted to show you guys how to uh, create a plugin and put it into the MU plugins folder that is a must use plugin that you cannot remove. So if you're building this for a client, you want to put that folder, that plugin in there so they can't disable it. So you may have noticed this also on some hosting sites, uh, some hosting sites like WP engine. Um, I think even SiteGround, SiteGround might not do it, but I think WP engine does. And there's a couple of others that when you install WordPress on their, on their platforms, on their hosting, it will automatically add in must use plugins that clean up the file structure. And so what that does is if you put in a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of plugins, and then you deactivated them and you deleted them and they didn't actually delete something didn't delete from that plugin, those must use plugins go in and clean up the server to save space, to save bandwidth, to, you know, for security purposes and stuff like that. So those type of services will use a must use plugin so that you can't deactivate it. And if you delete it, it will automatically re-add it. So we had a client that was using WP Engine and one of the must use plugins was affecting the load time and how the actual site loaded. And so we went into the FTP and we deleted that must use plugin. And then we reloaded the page and that must use plugin was back. So it automatically knows that you've deleted that plugin and it re-adds it. Yours is not going to do that. If your client gets access to the server through FTP and they delete that must use plugin, it's deleted. So you'll have to go back in and add it back in. That's how must use plugins work. I hope that helps you guys build a plugin that you don't want your client to be able to disable or delete. And, uh, and hopefully that answers some of the questions that uh, the man <laughs> asked on the comment. Now, I, I want to do a video that expands on PHP and curl and explains more about how to use curl uh, because it's very powerful. And the reason why we use curl um, is it is a cross domain way of pulling data. So you can also use file get contents and do a, you know, um, an external pull like that if your server allows it. But most days, most times now file get contents um, will block from external external sites. So using curl, most APIs use curl. Um, using curl is the best way to connect to the site and pull that data. So on this site, this must use plugin will generate the data that we want to pull, but then our, our site uses curl to connect to this site and pull those reports. So hope that helps. Hope you like this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribing because it's free. Um, like the video if you did, dislike it if you didn't. Comment, let me know what your thoughts are on using must use plugins. Let me know if you've used must use plugins and some ideas of using must use plugins. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.